Welcome everybody to Live with Prima Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, today we're going to create um, some really fabulous uh, file folders. Aren't these fun? Um, I can't remember who gave me the idea to do this, but I just thought it was the funnest idea. There's nothing more boring than staring at these super boring manila folders. So let's just make them totally fun and mixed media stuff, right? Um, and then you can use them for your scrapping stuff or you can use them in your office. Um, so that's really fun and you know, you can use whatever you have, right? So we will, um, we'll talk about some of the fun things that you can um, do with them using all the wonderful Prima stencils and such. So why don't we go ahead and get started. I am going to use today um, it's very minimal supplies that you need for this, which I know that sometimes it's kind of nice. Um, every once in a while I'll get the odd email like, oh, you know, it, it, you know, it takes so much for me to be able to, to make that one project that you made. It's just too expensive. This is such an economical um, project, right, using very minimal stuff. Um, and what we're going to use is the fabulous new Prima chalkboard paints. So, um, and we'll also use a little bit of um, other acrylic paints just because I don't have um, the entire collection. Um, so we're going to use um, these three for sure. So we'll use the uh, Golden Olive, which is stunning. We'll use the Antique Pink and of course my favorite Seabreeze. Okay. So we'll use those and um, we're going to use just acrylic paint. So whatever acrylic paint you have with you at home, that's what you want to use. All right. And the other thing that we're going to use is the fabulous. I love this collection. Hang on. I just got to pull it out here and I want to use scraps too, is the fabulous uh, coffee. Is it coffee time? Coffee break collection. Why do I call it coffee time? Coffee break collection. It's one of my favorite papers from the collection. Um, we're going to use some of the fabulous new sprints. Sorry, the camera keeps focusing in and out. I'm not sure why it's doing that. It's really annoying. Um, so really, really fab collection. Um, and uh, I'll go through it with you in a bit as we start on our file folders. Okay. So let's do that. I'm just going to put that aside. And let me walk through some of the stencils that we'll be working with. Yeah, they're awesome. Okay. Um, unfortunately, did I throw out the packages? I do do that sometimes. Usually I write the code just like you see in this one and somehow I missed doing that, but I did send Carrie all of the, um, what do you call them? The, um, codes so she can give them to you on the, um, on the board there on the chat. But this is one of the stencils that we'll be using. It's one of the new ones and I love this new size that Prima came out with because um, it's really manageable, um, especially when you're art journaling. And I know that sometimes um, the 12 by 12s can become a little bit harder to use. I do still love them, um, but I definitely love this new size. So definitely a must have for sure, you guys. Um, this one I love and it creates the coolest effect and I'll show it to you right now creates this really fun flowery effect um, and so it, the number for this one is 572150 okay and I know you it's probably really hard to see because I don't clean them very often because I'm a bad bad girl that's why okay I'm a bad girl bad very bad um, next one that we're going to use is the chevron and I know that the chevron um, comes in both the 6x6 and the 12 by 12 um, but this one I'm going to use is 564759. Okay. I am also going to use this beautiful butterfly one, 960452. I am also going to use, sorry, I'm using quite a bit. It's like the stencil uh, show. 564766. I love this one. What's it called? Lattice, I guess. This cool little star one, 960496. Two more, that's it. Um, and this one is, I love this one. It creates such fun 
effects. 960476. And last but not least, one of my faves, faves, faves. Look at this one. It's so yummy, hey? Um, it's 572235. Okay. So that's what we got, my friends. And let's get this party rocking. So I'm going to put these off to the side. And we're going to start with one at a time. And Hannah's kind of cramping my style over here because she's kind of taking over my desk. Right? I should kick her out, right? <laughs> should I kick her out, you guys? Tell me. Tell me. Um, the other thing, by the way, that we're going to use is some of the new art basics. Um, so that is going to be fun. So let's start with one. Just like so. And I want to start with my favorite one, which is this one right here. Okay. And let's go ahead and grab a little bit of paper. And so this is, I love, the, like I said, the coffee time paper. So yummy. Coffee break, not coffee time. Coffee break, anymore. And this is my favorite part because you literally get to tear, okay, and have some fun with that. No straight edges allowed here. Okay, this is a semi-straight, not really. Um, and we're going to take some Art Basics Gel Medium. And I like the 3D Matte Gel. That's kind of my uh, personal preference, and I know everybody kind of has their own. Um, but that's what I prefer. I just love the way, can you guys see the peak it has? Um, and it goes on really, really smooth. So you can use it with a pellet knife, or you can use it, of course, with whatever you want. So I mean, I can, I'm going to use a brush, to be honest. I'm going to use a brush today. I can find one that I kind of like. Let's use uh, this one's horrible. Horrible. What's going on with me today? Okay, we'll use this one right here. And we're just going to, and I don't actually care if I get some on the file folder because it's going to be coded at the end anyhow. So don't worry too, too much. And this is, by the way, a really awesome project for you to do with your kids. Um, I've done uh, file folder art journals before as well, so that's another really fun thing to do. So the art journal, or sorry, the file folders can be the cover to your art journal, like a junk journal, right? Which is kind of what I'm going to be making with Hannah later, um, using all different kinds of paper and such. And so I'm just getting the edges. And as you can see, the 3D gel was really smooth. Um, it's not very bumpy. Um, and I like that it doesn't bubble, right? That's a huge thing. And you know how, um, you know how Mod Podge, when you apply Mod Podge, your stuff just starts to bubble? That's not the case with this, which um, is a huge, huge plus, right, you guys? Um, so that's that. That's what I think about that my personal opinion about it um, and I'm gonna grab some of my other scraps instead of using a full sheet of paper because um, I have it all right so let's use a little bit of this one and this one is um, it's called fill it to the rim eight four six seven thirty two okay and it's that one that was kind of my favorite and again you're gonna do a little bit of rippage it's just very random Hannah's watching me teach. Have you ever watched me teach? Hannah? Yes, at Urban. Oh, yes. Is that the only time that you've watched me teach? Downstairs. Oh. Okay. There you go. All right, just like that. And, I mean, you can really just continue if you wanted to and add a little bit more. I really like this typewriter. It's kind of fun, but I don't want the code and by the way this one was eight four six seven oh one okay not that we'll be able to see a whole lot of that typewriter but um we can use it how does that sound it's kind of fun There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go now. All right, there we go. OK, 
Okay, that's that. And I'm going to put the paper off to the side for just a moment because we can actually go ahead and so you can add more. Actually, let's add just a tiny piece more. This is actually just a scratch piece of paper from, um, you know those fabulous paper pads that Prima has? I'll show you really quick. Is it this one? I don't even remember which one it is. It's like one of these pads right here. Those ledger pads. Okay, that's what this is from. And the ledger pads are... 84424. Um, no, 844424. Sorry, I missed a four in there. Way too many fours for me. Let's add a little bit of this one just because we can. All right. It's just very collagey. And if you don't want to add paper, you don't have to, but I think the paper adds a little bit of that extra element. That I love so that's why I'm doing that and I'm just really getting those edges really good I don't want them to lift especially when I'm applying paint later so I just want to have them sit okay it's so just like so there we go all right and now um, I'm going to take my paint so, um, and this is kind of where you get to have a little bit of fun and just create very odd shapes. And I've kind of done this in, in previous shows before, um, maybe a little bit. So we can take a little bit of this pink. Maybe I'll use a couple of the pinks. Okay. Whoops, I've got the seal right there. And I, again, this one is vintage pink. Now, one of the things that I do is I put barrier cream when I use acrylic paints and such on my hands because I use, I do so much of it that um, it's just a safety thing. I'm a little bit anal that way. Call me crazy. I've been called worse. So being called crazy is okay with me. It's totally okay. Right, Hannah? Mm -hmm. I'm okay with being called crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think I'm crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you think so. She thinks I'm crazy. Can you believe that? Darn kid. She's going to get a timeout. Don't you think? She needs one. Okay. And I'm going to take this. See, this is the reason I put barrier cream is because I love to use my fingers. And so I'm actually going to go in with that. And the chalkboard paint is so um, smooth. So really, really easy to use. And I'm just kind of smoothing it out. This is a really fun little abstract way to apply a little bit of paint to your project. And so obviously the more you work it, the more transparent it'll kind of be. Okay. So just allowing that pink to really work and it um, by the way this pink this whole um the chopper paints go really really well by the way with this collection um the coffee break collection not the coffee time collection i like to make up names for things why not right okay so just like so and then we'll do maybe just a little bit on the top right there it needs a little bit of pink just because i said so I know it's very messy and it's really um, organic. Okay, you can have a lot of fun with this, and I it looks like garbage at first, and I promise you it'll look great at the end. Okay, um, but this is really where you just kind of get to have some fun. Next, I am going to take um, what did I do here? I actually went and I took a little bit of acrylic paint, which I have beside me, and this is where you just you can use whatever you have on hand. Um, Let's use, I've got a little bit of pink here. This is just that Dino Weekly um, craft paint. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit on my palette. And again, just kind of giving it a little bit of a contrast. Okay. And I love the way that those pinks kind of go together. Any paint will work if that's the question. But I do love the chalkboard paint um, because it kind of has a matte um, finish and it does have a really beautiful transparency as well so that you can really see the um, textures from underneath, which I love so very, very much. Okay, So this is just kind of random paint. Okay, no rhyme or reason, but just a little, little something, something. Don't need to have a crazy amount of talent for this. Um, next, I am going to go ahead 
Uh, Carrie's asking if I'm getting the chalkboard paints in my store. Um, I am not. So, um, but there's several stores. If you're in Edmonton, I'm who carries them? I know uh, Urban Scrapbooks carries them. I don't know if the Ink Stampers carries them. If she's in on here I don't know but yes no I'm not carrying them um, if you do want them uh, from me from my store I will special order them for you okay um, that's the answer my friends next I am going to go ahead and add a little bit of I have really a lot of fun actually using neon colors it's I don't know I have this kind of crazy obsession about it lately so um, we're gonna add just a little bit of just fun little dots just like so okay. I have I have a neon obsession I don't know and the art world kind of does too right now which is pretty funny um, and I, I kind of caught on to it I guess I don't know I don't know what's going on with me it's just something so this is just a neon yellow it's just acrylic paint, fluorescent yellow, it's called. Okay. And, oh, sorry, kiddo. I need to, just a little bit of a baby wipe for my hands. And now, um, this dries fairly quickly, but can you pass me that gun, honey? Thanks. And I'm just going to dry this up really quick before I do the next layer because I'm going to use a stencil here right away. And really, I'm just building background right now. Who's coming to the um, California Art Escape in November? I will be teaching at the Prima office. We will be having so much fun. All right. Um, next, I'm going to take my stencil, and I'm going to take my lattice stencil. So let me grab that. Here we go. And I am going to take my green. My uh, This one is Golden Olive. And you do need a sponge of some sort if you have one. Okay, so I just like to use these makeup sponges. I think they work really great. Um, remember, this is um, fluid, right? Because it's intended to, you know, use as home decor and things like that. I like to keep these lids, as you can see. Um, they kind of get stuck back on, but it kind of keeps them nice and fresh. So um, try to keep those those little lids um, on your chalkboard paint. It, it saves, chalkboard paint can get um, crusty sometimes. So just something to note. Um, so like I said, because they're fluid, as you can see, um, you wanna make sure that you grab some, but then dab some off, right? Whether it's on your palette or um, on your craft mat, right? Try not to have it super saturated or it's gonna happen, it's gonna seep underneath the stencil. And so I'm just gonna do um, a little bit of uh, random patterns and I don't want this to be a super prominent um, piece on my um, on my file folder so I'm going light dark and then getting lighter and lighter and being very random about it as you can see when you lift gorgeousness right use your stencils to give you those patterns if you don't know how to draw that's why stencils are just so marvelous, right? It's so nice that they came into the scrapbooking world, isn't it? All right. Just like that. And then we'll do a couple more here and there. Just add such beautiful dimension. You see how light-handed I'm being with them so that they don't seep and they have a lot of pigment right so you don't have to worry about um, having a ton on your brush they have a lot of pigment so you don't need to go crazy on it okay so what's great about it I guess is I'm showing you that you can use the chalkboard paint as just regular acrylic paint right how cool is that because really that's that's what it is it just has probably a really large amount of chalk in it to make it chalkboard paint or 
maybe not chalk, but it's um, some sort of polymer. What is it called? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know how they make chalkboard paint. But anyway, <laughs> I could pretend. I could pretend, but really I'm not that good. Okay, I'm just going to dry this up before I do the next layer. Sandless grout. There you go. Yeah, don't worry. There's teal. Just a second. Chillax. Okay. Next, I'm going to take my teal, which is called Sea Breeze. Okay my favorite love it like love love it look at that color oh kill me now right take me now take me now right Hannah I love teal what's mama's favorite color teal. mama crazy yeah good girl all right so we're gonna make some fun circles because you guys know I, I am addicted to circles I have no shame and I'm okay with that Okay, so we're just going to make a half circle there. Very abstract. See, this is kind of what it's... Can you guys see the circles underneath there? Okay, so we're going to do some fun stuff like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you don't know how to draw, don't worry about it. Just seriously, just let yourself go and draw an imperfect circle. Honest to goodness. And just kind of... Um, you may have to give them, because it's chalkboard paint, right? You may have to give it one or two coats. That's the only thing about chalkboard paint, right? Even when you do like a mason jar or something like that, you may need to have two coats on things, all right? Chalkboard paint tends to dry, uh, have a transparency to it, so you just need to know that, okay, so that you're not disappointed with the results because it's supposed to do that. Okay. Just like that, and we'll do like a little one right here. I love these, I can't wait to use these in my office. And I haven't put them up yet, because, I haven't used them because I knew I needed them for the show. And I didn't want to put files and stuff on them and have to take everything out. So I'm going to do these and then I'm going to go back in and darken some of those ones up. Okay. Hannah is going to town on those sprays. She's so funny. She's using the beautiful Prima pinwheel stencils at the moment. So adorable. Okay, really fun and easy, right, you guys? And right now I'm just going to go over some of the ones that I did. And if they're a little bit transparent, I'm just getting a little bit more ink on them. So that we can see them through the layers. Any questions so far? There we go. Fabuloso. Fabuloso. And I know that I'm um, on camera, the blue, it's not really blue, it's like teal. Okay. So, but that's what happens. It's just, you know, the camera. So I'm gonna close that up so that I don't spill it everywhere and uh, dry that up just a little bit and then I'm going to add some centers and such. Good girl. You're doing a great job. Are you having fun? Oh, that's beautiful, huh? It's gorgeous. Are you going to show us all your beautiful creations after? Sure? Okay. And she cleans my stencils, which is something I don't tend to do very often, so that makes me happy. Use a clean uh, wipe, though. That might help. No, she's making her own, like, little um, something. I don't know. A junk journal, I guess. Yeah. So cute. Okay. 
And next, I'm going to take some more acrylic paint. So let's do, I need a little bit of green in there, but like brighter green. So we're going to use just this green right here. And let's get some a center in there because centers are so much fun. very abstract on you today it's okay I'm just getting you prepared for some workshops coming up I just released the first version of my um, the art of abstract uh, workshops it's kind of um, the first bit there's more to come um, but uh, I can't wait I can't wait for these workshops so much fun using so many mediums um, yeah Anyway, um, next I am going to go ahead and take some acrylic, white acrylic paint, which I thought I had here. Hannah, can you pass me the white acrylic paint? It's behind me on that cart, on that cart right there. The white, 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 that's blue. The one this is basics. Yep. Thank you. Just a little bit of white acrylic paint just needs a little bit of something something you could use gesso but the problem with gesso is that it dries too transparent you know what I mean so you need um, you kind of need the the starkness of the white okay I'm just giving it a little bit of shadow here and there okay. and as you notice I'm being very whatever about this and at the end it kind of looks fun okay. so don't worry too much about it and hopefully some of you are creating with me I am NOT offering the art of abstract online um, the art of abstract is um, I call it my traveling show for now um, I'm going to have um, a different version for um, online because um, I want to make sure <clears throat> that the people that are coming to my classes don't feel like they're getting um, ripped off, right? Because I don't like to usually teach what I teach um, when I travel because I don't think it's fair, right? Um, so I am going to go ahead and try this now. Sorry, if you don't know, Carrie has her cell phone, and whenever you guys have questions and she doesn't know the answer, she just shoots me a text. So, um, for those of you that are watching the recording, that's kind of what's happening. Okay, isn't this fun so far? Um, I am coming to Ontario. Did you not know that, Nancy? I'm coming to Toronto on November eighth weekend. And I will be teaching the art of abstract at Busy Bees. Yep. November, baby. Gorgeous, honey. Yeah, and from what I hear, it's getting full. So. If you want a spot, you better hurry until tomorrow. Get your spot. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, the, oh, that was a bit wet. That's all right. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead now and add my black. Now, you can continue adding layers and layers and layers. Um, but what's really cool is the like wow effect that's going to happen right now. And because these are fall folders that you're going to use um, for yourself, you don't want to junk them up. It's not like these aren't the folders you're going to add flowers to, you guys. Okay. As much as we all love our prima flowers, this isn't this isn't the time, right? You don't want to junk them up because the whole point of these is to, you know have them in your uh, 
have your files in there. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another sponge. Oh, here's a black one that's already junked up. And I'm going to take some black acrylic paint. Now, you could take, do I have the black one? Um, I didn't. I, I wasn't able to get the black one. That's why I didn't use it. So there is the black um, chalkboard paint, which I don't have, um, but it's awesome. So if, um, if you don't have that, I have a black acrylic paint right now. But I kind of like, the acrylic paint kind of has a shine, and I do like the matte of the chalkboard paint. So definitely go get yourself some of the new Prima uh, black chalkboard paint because you'll love it. Love it, love it. Okay, I just don't have it right now. So we got to use an alternative. Oh, this, this one's really gross, this uh, sponge. I'm sorry. i got to get a new one. It's like hard as a rock. And you know what's going to happen, right? And same thing. Always want to just sponge off a little bit. And we're going to cover this whole thing, okay? So really get in there. This stencil is really, um, it's like, it's got really thin little cracks. So you sometimes have to almost really get in there, all right? Uh, almost rub. Don't dab so much or you won't get those um, details. That's kind of what I found out about the stencil. I love it. I love it. Just really get in there. Any other questions that I may have missed? I know it's hard for me to um, look at the chat while I create. But this is a good time while I'm stenciling because I can kind of do both at the same time. Is the chat working a little bit better tonight than it um, it has been? I know Ustream has been a little bit wonky for some. Um, I'm hoping that it's a little bit better for y'all tonight. Yes, this is 572150 is the stencil. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's stunning, stunning, stunning. And yes, I'm covering the whole thing for the most part. You know, I guess you don't have to get the whole, whole thing, but it's fun when you do. I think I just got black paint on my nose because I literally just scratched my nose with the sponge in my hand. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? You're not allowed to laugh at me. Don't you know? Don't laugh at your mother. Bad girl. Put you on time out again. <laughs> See, they laugh at me. They don't even think I'm serious. My kids, they, they just laugh at me. Anybody else have that problem? All right, here's the reveal. Ta-da! Isn't that fun? How cool is that? I love that. Do you like that, Hannah? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to wash my scents off for me, honey? Thank you. See, that's why I have her down here. I knew there was a purpose. See, that's what you get for laughing at your mother, right? Uh, oh, that's good. I know, I love this stencil. It's just so yummy. And how fun. You just have a fun little altered... Um, was it chaotic? Oh. I know. It's so much fun. No, in the sink. She, I have a sink here. Yeah, so she's washed. Did you wash it or did you use yeah. a baby wipe, you little turkey? Use this. Oh, you used a baby wipe? Okay. Yeah. She used wipe. a baby wipe. Okay, sorry, I just want to dry it up to make sure that um, it doesn't get everywhere. Okay. All right, pretty good. So you like that? Fun, huh? Okay, so that's uh, number one. Can you put that off to the side for me, honey bunny? Thanks, babe. 
Okay, let's take one more. Let's take, we'll do two more together. So let's grab this one right here. Okay, Oops, this way. And I think we're going to make this one because I think it's so much fun. Isn't it? I love it. So we'll do this one. And what you need for this is you need your, I love this guy. It's the white heavy gesso. Okay. And I don't want to use a brush, but rather I love using like the scraper tools, right? Or you can use a credit card or whatever you've got um, on hand. I happen to love these guys and I love that it fits like perfectly in there. So I can just go ahead and just get, oops, just get that gessoed up really good. Okay. You can get quite a bit on there. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. You can always put it back in the bottle. You don't want it to be like, you know, 10 feet high. Um, you don't want it super bumpy. It is a file folder after all. But, um, you can smooth it out pretty good. And you're not, the purpose is not to cover the entire, all of the edges with gesso. You want it to be, as you can see, do you see how it's pretty rough? Okay. So don't, don't be like, um, miss perfectionist. Okay. No perfectionism, um, allowed for this project. All right. And I'm just kind of, with my um, tool, I just kind of create texture on lines because um, it gives it some really fun interest. So that's really what I'm doing. I'm not smoothing it out to cover. I'm smoothing it out to create um, texture. Okay. So like that. It's just, it's too much fun. Seriously, too much fun for me. All right. So just like so. And then I can just go ahead and I, whatever I don't use, I can just scrape right back, but just make sure um, you always, one of the things that I do, um, I have gotten in the habit of doing is wiping the edges of my jars because I do this with every, it doesn't matter what brand I use. I'm always dunking my stuff up and I have the worst carpal tunnel. So I have a hard time uh, opening my jars. So this way I know for sure that I can open the jar next time that I use it. Okay. So just a little quick tip, right? Hannah Lulu. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to dry this up really quick and then we'll get to a couple layers and I'll show you a really fun little, what's that? Is that dad? Just call out for him. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Just make sure that door's locked, honey. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you guys. Hang on a second, guys. Hannah? Is that dad home? Is it? Curtis? Come down, Hannah. He was outside. Oh my God. Sorry about that heart attack, you guys. Whoo. It's all good. Kind of converted. Close the door, honey. My husband came home early. Ava was in the bathroom and she didn't answer Hannah. And there's some stuff that got knocked over. So it freaked me out. I think my heart is pounding a million miles an hour right now. Jeez. Jeez Louise. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I think the ladies got freaked out too, Hannah. You got a point. Point it like this. There you go. Uh, sorry about that, you guys. I honestly, my, I, I don't know if you can tell, my hand is shaking. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. You know what? I've had, I've had, um, a close call while my husband was away. This drunk guy came to my door and he thought it was his house or his friends wouldn't let him in. And this was like at 4 a.m. or something like that. The kids were sleeping. I was freaking out. He went to my front door and my back door and he was banging and like swearing. And I'm like, oh my God. And instead of calling the police, guess who I call? My husband who is out of town and he can do nothing for me. He's like, can you just call the police? I'm like, no, but I wanted to tell you first. <laughs> oh. All right, I think that's pretty good. Sorry, I'm like, I'm still shaking. All right, we're good. Okay, let's get this party moving, right? Okay. Um, what do I need to do next? I, it, this threw me off. Yes, I was going to show you a really, really fun technique. Um, what you can do is these um, these fan brushes rock, right? And I have so many different sizes because I really do love fan brushes. I'm going to use this size, I think, for this particular project. Um, but so... Um, I'm going to take the, um, that teal chalkboard paint, which is called, I keep calling it teal, but it's called sea breeze. Okay. And we're going to take that and we're going to do something really fun with it. Uh, oh, before I do that, actually, I forgot one little step is to do the one stenciling. So let's do the stenciling first. Sorry. Oh, did I do that first? What did I do first? Yeah, I did the stenciling first. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay, we're gonna take this guy, which is our fabulous uh, chevron. We all love our chevrons, don't we? We're gonna take a little bit of acrylic paint. And we're just gonna get that right on there. Okay, very randomness. In a balanced form, as always. So one here, one here, and then you'd have to have another one there to make it more like a triangle, right? Visually pleasing to the eye, right guys? Okay, so that's that one. Gorgeous, isn't that a beautiful stencil? I have this one in my store, um, but as a six by six, not as a 12 by 12, which is much easier to use, um, quite honestly. And next one that we wanna take is this one right here which is another fun one, but let's dry this up really, really quick. This craft paint dries really quickly, especially if you use it, um, if you don't use too much of it. You could also use your chalk inks. I just thought of that too. Let's do that. Let's, let's use our chalk inks. And I've got some right here. So why not, right? And they are permanent. So, Let's use this guy because that's kind of the color that I was going to use anyway. So, just going to kind of get in there just like that. Even on top of the ink. See that? Yep. All right. Perfect Amondo. Not too much, just a little bit. It's just very random little patterns. Maybe we'll do a little bit right here. Just like that, okay? Beautiful, it's so beautiful. Okay, and now we are going to take this and dry it up. See, the chalk inks work beautifully. And now we're gonna do the fun little technique. So what you need is a little fun fan brush. And no, I'm not gonna be splattering, okay? Sorry, was that kind of sitting in your way there? Um, and we're going to take our fan brush and we're going to dip it in our uh, chalkboard paint 
Now, this is where you need to make sure that you have like some sort of other paper or other palette knife, kind of like this. And I just kind of brush it through, okay? So try not to have it super goopy. Again, kind of like what we talked about before. And so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna create really fun brush strokes. And look how beautiful that fan brush. It does the most gorgeous effects, right? That you can see right here. So the more, the less you put on is kind of the effect that I guess you're going to have. And of course you can use even a little brush, which will give you a different look, right? So I love fan brushes. They can do some pretty remarkable things, especially on a canvas. Oh, that could go, I could do a whole lesson on fan brushes, okay? But that is a um, fun little technique for y'all. And then close this up so it does not dry up again. And we'll dry this up. Now are you guys talking about scary stories? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to start that. <laughs> Next, I'm going to take my absolute favorite one here. This guy right here. How cool is this guy? 572235. Okay. And um, I don't need to get all of the words. Just some is okay. Again, I'm going to need um, either you can use your black uh, chalkboard paint or just black acrylic paint. Okay. Um, just, I almost have none left in here, so I'm going to squeeze out whatever I can. There you go. Come on, baby. Come out. Come out for me. And I really just want to make sure that for sure I get the flower um, done really well. So that's going to be my main focus. And the reason I'm using black is because it's a really nice pop, especially when I use a lot of color underneath. If you use anything other than black, it might not give you quite that uh, wow factor. Okay, so just something to note that you can certainly use um, any other colors that you want. Okay, this is all about personal preference, right? You guys have to start stop talking with scary stories because I just can't handle it. And I can't believe I sent Hannah up. Like, what was I thinking? Seriously. Because what if there was somebody up there? Like, just my judgment sometimes. Seriously. Stupid. It's because I'm doing my Ustream show. Because secretly, I kind of knew it was Curtis. Not secretly, but I think subconsciously. That's what I meant. Um, it was just, he came home a bit too early, so it freaked me out. Ta-da! Isn't that gorgeous? Love that. Hey, Hannah, here's a stencil for you to wash. <laughs> Did you hear that? My child just said no to me. Oh, boy. I know, right? It's gorgeous. <laughs> so you can make a big old mass on the background and then add a pop of black and I swear it'll just be so awesome right and that's kind of the beauty of this technique I just love it The number on the stencil was 572235. 
Alright. Okay, that one's done. Okay, so so far we have this two. Are you guys up for one more? What do you guys think? Should we do one more, Carrie? Do we have enough time? I just want to make sure we have enough time to do one more. I don't know. I think we do, right? I say yes. Let's say let's do it. Should I make an executive decision? Because we've got this one still to do. And I just want to make sure. I want to be responsible about the time. That's all. You know, this one's kind of funky. Not for everybody, but kind of a weird one. And that's okay. All right, should we do it? One more. We'll do it quick. We'll try anyway. Um, once again, I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice coat of gesso. What are you doing? Okay. All right, so I'm just going to grab some. Just like that. And you can do some spots thicker than others. This is really thick, so I can't exactly pour it. I have to literally scrape it out. I love texture. I wish this was an art journal page right now. Because I just play forever. Okay, just like that. All right, pretty good. Clean this up after the show in my um, sink so that it doesn't gunk up too, too much. And let's dry this up really quick. Um, I have several ways. I have some in binders and I have some, you know, in those 12 by 12 um, cases that you can, the plastic clear cases you can buy at Michael's. Um, I store them in sizes. So I have, and in companies. So I have like, all my Prima 12 by 12 stencils are in one box. All my Prima 6 by 6 stencils are in one box. All my, um, let's say, Crafters Workshop 6 by 6 are in one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Does that make sense? Because then I kind of know where everything is and I know everything that I have. Um, you could definitely do this on a canvas. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And that's the beauty of um, this mixed media technique. It's, it's not very specific to file folders. You can do this on an art journal page. You can do this on a canvas, like Carrie said. You can do this on anything. So really, really easy to recreate. Um, just something really cool, by the way, that I want to show you. If you have a palette knife and your gesso is still um, a little bit wet, this you can create some really um, fun shapes. Okay, so we have to do this when it's wet, see, like that. Okay, um, but you can create um, fabulous texture. So it's just something that, this is something that you could do on a canvas in particular. Um, I just wanted to show you that really quick. And, and I don't mind that there's texture on there because we can play with that in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to take um, some more stencils, of course, because that's what we're going to do. And let's take some of the stars. What color should we do the stars? Maybe a yellow? I think we're missing a little bit of a yellow, don't we? Let's do a bit of yellow. And I didn't get the yellow chalkboard paint either, which would have been really nice to have, wouldn't it? And there is, I believe, right? Isn't there like a yellow? Hang on. I'm, I'm totally speaking out of turn. Just a second. I'll tell you if there is. Yes, there is. I don't know what it's called. But you can see it it's it, the yellow is right there so so you can actually see it better right there so that would be really really gorgeous as well it's kind of like a buttery yellow this one's a bit bright but you know stars are bright and this one is nine six zero four nine six another one of my 
favorite stencils. I do use it actually quite a bit. Just like that. Hannah, are you down here? No, apparently she's not. Because I really need her to wash my stencils at the moment, and she's not here. It's not making me happy. Golden. I know. I think that when I ordered them at uh, Carrie, they, they were out of some of them. So this is what I got. I got some of the darker ones, like the brown ones, um, but I didn't get the yellow or the red. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to take my butterfly one, my butterfly stencil, this one right here, and it's 960452. And we're gonna do some butterflies. Let's do, let's use some of our chalkboard inks. I'm thinking we need a little bit of purple. So what about sweet pea? I'm just gonna use my teeth. And I don't wanna regret this. So I'm gonna use scissors or my Prima craft tool, which is conveniently handy. I use it all the time. Okay. And we're going to, oh, it's nice and new, so it's nice and chalky. Oh, yeah, baby. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is so chalky, full of goodness. Chalky, full of goodness. I love my chalk inks. I use them so much. You guys know that. Purple uh, used to be one of my favorite colors, and I think I kind of killed it for myself. You know when you overdo um, it with a color? And that's kind of what happened for me with purple. And so I find that I haven't been using purple as much, but I'm kind of coming back to it. So I'm finding it in my acrylic paints. I'm really, look at that. That's so cute. I love that. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. Now let's say that you do not have um, I don't know, all these fabulous things, um, in your house to create, you know, shapes and things with, you could take like a simple, this is just like an old washi tape roll. So, um, a good example is let's, let's take, um, I don't know what color, let's do like, not a red, but like, let's take a, um, uh, something thick. So how about like an orange? Cause that kind of goes with the theme here. Let's take a uh, thick orange acrylic paint. The reason I'm saying thick is because the thin might run a little bit and you can just kind of get around the edges. Okay. So you don't always need the most sophisticated tools for things, right? And you can create some really fun little shapes. So don't feel like Oh, I don't have everything. That's okay. You don't need to have it all. All right. Well, just use what you got. Okay. So just like that. Fabulous. Okay. Easy peasy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then we'll dry that up and then we can add some black wow factor to this puppy. She needs a little bit of green in there too, I think, to be honest. Like I need a little bit of green somehow in there. I don't know, crazy, but it just it just needs it. it just needs ooh, some brightness. That'll make a nice shade of brown. Let's not blend that too much, right? And I almost feel like it needs a little bit of pink. And use your sponge. Your sponge will make the coolest effects as well. So. Don't be afraid to use the tools that you have. Okay, just like that. I almost got a, a cut from this stupid file folder. Okay.
Okay. And I'm going to take that stencil. Where did it go? Didn't I just have it? Oh, yeah. It's sitting right there. And with this one, because it's a little bit smaller, oh, this is not dry. This is going to be a mess. Um, you'll have to kind of move it around a little bit, which is fine. And you may not want to do the entire thing like I did. I'm going to show you. So let's add a little bit more black in here. And like I said, I'm almost out of this block, so we'll see what we can get out of this thing. And then after this, we'll throw this guy in the garbage, I think. Oh, not much left in there. Okay. So maybe we can do a bit more randomness with this guy this time. And that'll help. Okay. That's kind of funky. So funky. Let's get a full flower in there, though. And on some of them, it can just be very random. Oh, that's fun. I almost like it better than the last one, I think. It's not so, um, it's not so offensive in your face, right? Right? This one's like, whoo, wow. And this one's a little bit more muted. So I kind of like that a lot. Right? So you can do anything on the background. You add a little bit of black and pow, it just pops. Aw, thank you. You guys are sweet. That is it, my friends. That is all I have for you tonight. It was three file folders using all these wonderful products. Um, definitely get yourself some chalkboard paints because they're awesome. Um, you can create some pretty uh, fabulous stuff with this. Um, what does it say? Apply liberally, let dry for at least 24 hours for sure. Um, especially if you're using it on glass, right? If you're making those beautiful mason jars, um, definitely wait. Um, and then I would, um, for if you're putting them on the inside, I would definitely maybe throw in a sealer or something like that so that um, if you are going to put like brushes or something inside, it doesn't flake off, right? Um, so... Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that's what we got. So here is, this one's not the one we made today. This is the one that we made today. This one, this one, and one that looks like this. I'm going to put it aside, but one like that. Okay. So that's what we created today. I can't wait to see your guys' uh, file folder creations with some uh, amazing Crema stencils. So please show them to me. Tag me on your posts so that I can see them. I'm going to do um, some quick announcements. So let's see here. I'm going to just pull them up. The first announcement I want to make is, um, for those of you that um, weren't um, at the beginning of the show, I am coming to Prima on um, in November. And Carrie will post the link to, my, uh, to the event. And um, I'm coming to Prima to teach, and it's two classes. The um, cost is $1.99. You get two amazing classes well beyond, um, you know, the classes are way below their actual price point, um, as well as you will get lunches and you get to crop and you get to shop um, at the Prima Warehouse, as well as um, Deb Mack is going to be bringing her shop. Um, and so you get to shop for the brand new Prima goodies and more, okay? Um, I'm going to have prizes. I'm going to have goodie bags. So all that fun stuff. So definitely uh, come on down. And uh, we'd love to see you. And um, let's see what else. Next show coming up is Kasha. Kasia. Kasha. Creating a grungy desk organizer. All right. And that's on Tuesday the 14th at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Okay. Yes. And my event is called California Art Escape. Okay, um, it's in Chino, California. Sorry, I probably should have said that. Huh? Kind of forgot about that. So, anything else? Any questions, anybody? I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording for those that are watching the recording, but I will stick around to answer some questions. <laughs>